Hey everyone, Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about overloading constructors in your C++ classes and constructor delegation. So let's go ahead and get started by writing the class. And the thing to keep in mind here is that constructors are member functions. They just have a special purpose, right? So since they're member functions, they can be overloaded just like any other member function can be. So let's go ahead and create a class named um, circle. And class circle will have a private member for the radius. And then as part of its public interface, we're gonna give it a couple different constructors, right? First, we'll add a mutator for setting the radius. So void set radius. And we'll define this thing inline because it's such a simple little method, right? So such a simple little function, radius equals R. And then we'll have our accessor, which will simply return the radius, right? So we'll do double get radius const. Uh, return radius. Okay, so so far so good. Now here's where we're going to have our constructors. So we'll have a default constructor. And remember what a default constructor is. It's a constructor that requires no arguments. So it's just going to have an empty parameter list. So what this is going to do is simply initialize radius to zero. Okay, now that's the default constructor, but we can overload it. So what does overloading constructor mean? What does overloading any function mean? It just means that you have a different parameter list. And therefore, depending on what set of arguments you pass to the function is going to determine which version of the function actually executes. So if I want to have the option of instantiating a circle with a default value of zero for radius, then I'll instantiate it and not pass any arguments at all. Or I will instantiate it by passing a radius as an argument to the constructor. So I now have two different options. This is the overloaded constructor. So I can now instantiate the circle in a couple different ways. So let's take a look at it. So let's do circle C. So in this version, I'm using the default constructor. Why? Because I'm not passing any arguments to the constructor. So if I was to do C out, C dot get radius, you would see that zero there because we use the default constructor. And what does the default constructor do? It simply initializes radius to zero, right? And um, we can reinforce that in our minds by using a temporary little output statement here where we just say something like C out entering the default constructor. Okay, so if we run that again, then you'll see entering the default constructor, right? Now, that's one way, but I can also invoke the overloaded constructor. So how do I do that? Well, I'll create a second circle object, and this time I'll pass it a value, say 1.2, and this will use the overloaded constructor. So if I was to do C out D dot get radius, then you're gonna see that I got my 1.2 out of the D circle object. So, there you go. You can have as many constructors as you want. As a matter of fact, why don't we go in here just to illustrate this a little further. We'll put the C out statement here too. C out entering the overloaded constructor. It'll be very, very explicit if we, if we do that, right? It'll be incredibly explicit. So let's do it. Okay. So now you can see that for the D circle, you know, we entered the overloaded constructor. Okay, so now let's talk about constructor delegation. Oftentimes you're gonna have a class that has multiple constructors like this, and they're all kind of doing a similar type of thing, right? So take a look at the default constructor. What's it doing? It's assigning a value to radius. We'll look at the overloaded constructor. What's it doing? It's assigning a value to radius. It's just the difference is, is that with the default constructor, we're assigning zero, and with the overloaded constructor, we're assigning you know an argument to it. So they're kind of doing similar things. So what you can do with a delegated constructor is you can kind of make your life a little bit easier by just not worrying about putting anything in one of the constructors and instead just passing on something to the other constructor. So if I do something like this and I pass the zero as an argument, then what's going to happen is, is that this default constructor is simply pass the zero as an argument to that constructor. So it's kind of nice in that way, right? So we don't have to have any additional code in here and therefore we don't risk making additional mistakes. And you'll see that it's gonna work just the same. And as a matter of fact, it's a double, so let's make that a 0, 0.0. So it's gonna work just the same. It's just that now I didn't have to write any code in the body of the default constructor. 
Now you'll see here a difference. Entered the overloaded constructor, entered the overloaded constructor. Why did it say that? Because when it came time to execute the default constructor right here, the default constructor passed off its responsibility, right? It said, no, 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 let's, let's let the overloaded constructor handle that. So I'll just pass the zero to him and then he'll go ahead and assign the zero to radius through the statement here on line 17. So it's really kind of nice. I mean, because and you can chain all of these things together. I mean, you know, you could have say another um, overloaded constructor and maybe we'll add the ability to store the diameter, right? So we'll we come up here and we'll put uh, double diameter up here. And so if we want to assign or initialize both those values using arguments, then we could say, oh, well, radius equals R, and we could say that diameter equals D, right? Well, like I said, we can continue chaining these things together. We can say, all right, well, let's go ahead and invoke the second overloaded constructor. We'll pass it the R, and then we'll pass it zero for the diameter, right? So in this way, you know, depending on how you call the thing, you know, you don't have to have all this extra code in here. It cleans it up quite a bit, right? And this is something that Java has had for a while that C++ stole, I think it implemented in, uh, I want to say C++14. But uh, so now if we come here and we create another circle, let's call this E, right? We can do um, all kinds of different options. And let's add um, a get diameter accessor. So we'll do something like um, double get diameter const return diameter. Okay. So then we'll go down here and we'll see out E dot get radius and we'll do um, e dot get diameter okay and we'll do that for every single one of these guys so you can see how it changed so now let's add in here so we can follow along c out entered circle double r double b okay and so we should see that this executes three times right because the default constructor here is going to pass the zero off to the first overloaded constructor. And then the uh, first overloaded constructor is going to pass off the, the R and the zero, zero to the second overloaded constructor. And then the overloaded constructor is going to do its thing. Okay. So let's check it out. So you can see entered circle, uh, entered circle, entered circle. So basically what we did is we just let this guy handle all of the initialization for us. And these were just handing them off as needed. Okay. So when we invoked the default constructor, the zero was passed off to R and then that passed off the R and another zero to our second overload constructor. And then when we invoked this constructor, it passed off its R and its zero zero to the two parameters here. And then of course, when we invoked this constructor, you know, we just, we passed the values to R and D straight away. So here, for example, okay. So now you know how to use overloaded constructors and constructor delegation for your classes in C++.